Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. So, at first, I would like to thank the uh, organizer to give me a chance to introduce my uh, company. Basically, also, uh, most part will be my uh, personal experience. Um, so, today's talk, I will uh, divide into three parts. The first is like our experience, iPhone Maps experience about biosimilar in China. So second one is uh, assessing the uh, opportunities and the uh, challenges in uh, biobatter development. So uh, the third one is building the capacity of a, a small company into an in innovative product-focused company. So uh, as, as shown in this morning's panel speaker, uh, we, we can notice that how many times China has been mentioned, right? So this is, I don't know how, how, how accurate is this. So basically, based on this table, we will see that uh, now, uh, last year, China is like second largest pharmaceutical consumption uh, country in the world. And by projection, uh, this is that in 10 years or in nine years, China can be the largest one. It could happen, could not, depends on many, uh, many things. But one fact is like the market is rapidly expanding, right? And the, the market-wise, so we will see is um, still OTC is 24%, generic 65%, Novo drugs only 10%, including imported drug. And so we, we will see that in the based on the data, biologics still have very very mini, minimal stake in the whole thing, but also it's rapidly expansion. I, I my feeling is we still follow this uh, like traditional pharmaceutical. Generic will be the most, plus some uh, very little novel things in the uh, near future. So particular uh, monoclonal uh, therapeutic uh, antibodies at very early stage, we can see that only 25 companies in China has clinical stage map projects. Th uh, on the market, there's four monoclonal antibodies, one FC fusion proteins, and mostly are biosimilars. So is it something like kind of uh, particularly in China or maybe even some other countries, developing countries, redundant effort on blockbuster maps. Uh, for example, there are two, six companies working on uh, Herceptin, five companies on uh, Internacept. Those are known. There's many unknown uh, smaller players or pharmaceuticals as well. So. And new antibody development narrowed to very few uh, popular targets. As I know so far, VEGF, TNF, EGFR are three most common uh, popular targets in China uh, people are developing uh, antibody against. So basically, uh, I started iPhone Map in early 2009 with um, about 100K US dollar personal cash. and. Uh, also, like a about similar amount from government funding, I start this one from uh, beginning. But the, my vision is I want to try to not really build a successful business, but just a successful story and some something I can talk about later on, right? So I my vision is try to build an open platform. So I start with a strategic CRO CMO, something like that. So the strategic CRO CMO, which means. I work on those, I can lead into innovation, in innovative biologics. And uh, we develop something in-house and rapidly transfer it out at early stage, mid stage, pre and stage. So we spend lots of time develop technology. All those will lead into innovative biologics. So some achievements, we achieved like 2000, 2000, uh, early 2009, we set up a lab, first lab in, uh, with two people in Barbie. Uh in early one years later, we had generic fact eight uh, lab scale process done. Uh, so late 2010, we start first map by similar project, and now we we are uh, building a, a scale up GMP facility uh, with like 2,500 square uh, 2,500 liter uh, production capacity. We are planning for first IND uh, for one of the biosimilar antibody at the end of this year. Okay. So just a little bit, uh, quickly go through what we have done. 
the, the reason I go back to one of the reason I go back to China, I tried to develop fact paid because at that time, uh, in 2007 something, everyone talking about the shortage of coding factors. We can see that in China, the fact eight is, is like, uh, like very, uh, comparing to the even average level uh, in the world, or Brazil is very low, the consumption. There's a huge unmet medical needs. Uh, by means of this protein, it's a huge protein with complete PTM, very difficult process. And we, based on our own technology, we did it very quick. We had uh, a process with 60 IU per mil, uh, very good activity. The cost, based on the small scale uh, production, is less than one cent uh, per IU. Comparing to the current selling price on the market, it's one dollar per IU. So, and we also very quickly, uh, based on our same technology platform, we built we developed FAC 7A, FSH, FAC 9, and HCG. We transferred a few projects out of this to as exchange for the cash flow into the company. So by similar uh, monoclonal antibody, the first we did is um, the investing by similar uh, map. So we don't, we have kind of moderate on our target. We, our target is 1.5 gram per liter. Comparability is not similarity. We just do a very preliminary comparability study uh, uh, with uh, about 15 character uh, characterization. So we, we know that by uh, primary structure peptide mapping, they are the same. The charge distribution uh, kind of overlap, and the activity is okay, SDS page, whatever. So at also the same time, we quickly developed uh, Centuxi map, Orencia, Humara and uh, Remicade, Perceptin. So basically, we do this. It's not like we are really interested in biosimilar. We just want to say right in the tide because many pharmaceutical companies, especially in China, they want to start working on biosimilar. We just do those projects and quick, quickly transfer out. You know, so that's one of our business uh, point. So in terms of bio beta, so. What I'm thinking about is biosimilars only has how many uh, blockbusters, maybe less than 15, right? So, so what's the next after if all the biosimilars has been done? So we're thinking about biobetter as uh, uh, you know, next step thing. So, but in terms of biobetter, we can see that you know, there are two categories. You know, successful, we know that new luster is much better in terms of commercial-wise, much better than new pudding. RNS, better than new pudding. Packaging, Humara, comparing to Remicade. But in terms of bad example, we will see that Ariza is not even close to Rituxan so far. Also, its claim is much better CDC activity or whatever. So this one is complete failure, failed like phase three as the Medimine. Amging EGFR antibody, market wise, side effect wise, is much worse than Arbitox. The other example is like Enlova, uh, it's a long acting uh, FSH. It's developed by uh, sharing, now it's part of Merck. It, it turns out by projection wise, it's only capture is compete with itself and cannot, cannot even commercially uh, like uh, get into Serena, EMD Serena's uh, FSH market. So basically, when we develop our better, I'm always thinking about, you know, is bio better really better? I don't know how better is better, right? So there's market uncertainty based on those examples. And also, the one last thing is like, with, if we spend lots of time effort to develop bio better, and what if come from like low cost bio similar? And uh, those are all cost like the uh, business uncertainty. But anyway, so our view about bio better, like I said, as a better market entry strategy, this market is not commercial. It's just the tech transfer. So this model, tech transfer, will be continue uh, for like a couple of years uh, to support our internal research project. So basically, when we do bio better, we need some new flavor in addition to just simple half-life extension, avidity change, uh, avi uh, affinity improvement, and also uh, as a transition into a 
um, let's say innovative uh, therapeutic development. That means during biobatter development, we have to build it, uh, building uh, our technology capacity. So just a couple examples of what we are doing. So biobatter, we want to, some examples, Arbitux, Remicade, Synergis. We had a backstage automated humanization uh, platform ongoing. So in this platform, in addition to the traditional humanization, we have dehumanized, uh, dehumanization and also improving, all based on the uh, virtual calculation, improving solubility and stability of the newly developed uh, variants. So based on that, we can do high concentration formulation, okay, use the microcrystal and some other formulation strategy. So the mean at the end, what we are developing is change those things, those are IV drug into a subcutaneous self-injection. So why we can do that, humanized, and dehumanized, that means you subcutaneous, we have less uh, side effect as uh, immunogenicity wise. And also, based on the improved solubility and stability, we can do high concentration formulation. Okay? So, the other thing we are doing is try to play something around the multifunctional, like bivalent antibody, uh, but we are focusing mostly on antibody and protein interface. Okay? Just Followed a few sli slides. It's just some technology thing based just a couple couple uh, examples. Okay, just by molecular biology, what do we have to do to achieve what we want? So the first multivalent, we have to be able to express either by stable cell line or by some, some other mean multiple component of this protein. So we in house we build a three cassette or now even four for four cassette, five cassette expression vector. By one vector, we can express three components simultaneously, just in, in make the stable cell line generation and transient much easier. So, to able to be able to screen in lots of variants uh, in short time, we improve the transient expression system by adding a uh, cis element. So now routinely we can get over 100 milligram per liter just based on. Low density transfection is not like uh, now, like many people use high density trans uh, transfection. Uh, one, another thing is like for certain engineered antibody or protein, it's very hard to express. Instead of using one selection marker, we develop dual selection. So this is one example. We, the, the, at the beginning, we screen like hundreds of clones. We cannot get any expression. With the newer system, we got dramatically improved um, expression. So those are just some examples. We have to make the technology to, uh, to be able to make bio better. And in this thing, those technology can be used for innovation um, drug development. So the, the last part is like building up the capacity based on the previous work. So the first is self-development into an IND uh, center and the collaboration because in China, you know, we, we still have a long way to go to become really innovation. And partnering with major pharmaceuticals either in China or outside. Okay. So what we have done so far in three years, we had two screening systems, phage display like commonly used, and also an yeast display system, uh, very powerful uh, for high affinity antibody uh, selection and maturation. We build a full capacity of analytical. Uh, we can do uh, almost 30 different category of characterization now. Process development, including media optimization and also the feed optimization, spending media analysis. So finally, after the GMP build up, we can do from uh, milligram to gram quantity, even kilogram quantity production. So those, we just make ourselves ready for innovation um, drug development. So innovation through uh, collaboration in license. So that's like we realize based just by ourselves, we won't be able to really do much uh, because the, the environment and the academic base is still kind of a few years behind in China. You know? So the, the way we select the um, project uh, based on those criteria, the first is valuable addition to our technology platform. So there, there is some med, med medical needs in China and also we would like to have friendly inventor because we are seeking uh, to a long-term relationship. So 
two examples. One is uh, hepatitis B therapeutic antibody. Uh, this gained through each display. Uh, the second is uh, a CDC enhancer. It's a native, uh, it's an engineered native protein, uh, which inhibits CD, CD59. Anyway, we can have a little bit details later. So the hepatitis B, you know, in China is huge. So this lab in, in Chicago University, they had a yeast display system, which has been transferred to us as well. So just they do one round of fat screening, use yeast display, and two round of affinity maturation. We can get a KD to a ADR subtype. This is a major subtype in China to 0 0.3 peak molar with, with virtually no off rate. So basically this is very ideal for neutralizing antibody for hepatitis B virus. So the antibody has been tested in in vivo um, and, uh, mouse model. Uh, it's, the liver is humanized and the uh, Im uh, immune, uh, immune system is uh, immunized. It's kind of mimic human uh, hepatitis B. So based on the the data we can see that this uh, SCFV, at that time we test SCFV, SCFV at first, we, it can neutralize the virus very effectively. Okay. So next one, this is just IHC data shows that the, the SCFV can protect completely the HPV infection of the liver in humanized mouse. Okay. This is one successful example. We are going to push this antibody into clinic uh, mid next year, in 2003, uh, 2013. So the second example is, uh, is, uh, is I noticed this story based on the, it's highlighted by clinical uh, cancer research. Basically, uh, either uh, the cancer cell or some certain virus, they evade complement uh, dependent activity by overexpress CD59, so this is, uh, um, this protein specific, specifically inhibits CDC activity. There's a nat naturally occurred protein. This inhibits CD59 by reactivating the whole complement system, okay? So, and then ends up like just, I licensed this technology and did some development. We can see that this protein uh, called ILYD domain 4 can just uh, when it used with rituxan map together, which can increase efficacy, like obviously against the uh, rituxan resistant CAO or NHL or CLI. So this is an animal study. This is a summary. We can see that this protein can dramatically improve the efficacy. Okay. So another interesting experiment, which is, was done after the, uh, in the, at the same time we are licensing this, we can see that the HIV uh, use the uh, same mechanism can avoid the CDC uh, lysis. And by adding this protein, we can just uh, uh, completely uh, uh, like lys lys the uh, HIV virus. So this one we are going to also uh, enter clinic uh, for, for R&D by the end of next year. So. Anyway, that's it. Thank you.